that uh, Kelly, I believe just this earlier this year, you had the the opportunity to run a momentum planter. We did. We ran trials with the planter. It worked really good. Yeah, I ran against your planter. Even had a little side bed on that, as I recall. Arthur and I had a bet to yeah. some adult beverages. Yeah, that's right. Now, unfortunately, Arthur couldn't be here today, so so Kirby's here with us, and we're going to go out and do a little bit of demo and kind of show the efficiencies we have with that momentum planter, just one of the, the many that we have. So we're going to run a quick video here, and then we'll turn it over to Kirby, and he's going to show us the fold and unfold feature of the momentum planter. Thanks for the video, Mark. You, you guys have seen a lot of uh, focus on simplicity and efficiency. The momentum is no exception. So for that reason, we're going to go and show you a quick demo on how simple it is to fold a planner. We'll talk a little bit about smart frame technology. So if you guys want to follow me or watch on the screen, to our cab control. So this is what Rick would see in the cab. I stole it from him here. Um, we've got our 2020 monitor that's going to control the seating and fertilizer the planter, things like Delta Force. But we also have our frame control right below there. So this allows me to very quickly and easily fold the planter without a lot of extra steps. Since I'm, I don't have to run a remote and hit a switch at the same time, it's a very, very simple operation. So if you guys watch, I've got a fold and unfold button. Notice the row units are down, right? So I'm going to hit full. It's automatically going to raise because it knew the position of those row units. And it's going to fold up to 12 feet wide and 12 feet high, so which is a narrow transport configuration. So when we're going into those tight field entrances, narrow rows, it's easy to get in and out of those locations. So there we are. I want to unfold it, of course, I just reverse that process. Switch again. Now, while this is unfolding, one new thing for model year 2025 and momentum, we've installed our precision planning EMHD liquid system. It's a row by row liquid system that gives us swath control, term compensation, and an excellent accuracy row to row. So we're feeding that crop consistently across the width of the planter, regardless of how much we're turning, regardless of how much uh, where our field shapes are. I'm going to stop this for a second. Let's say that I, I wanted to lower that right now to, to work on the row units. I can still lower that. So if it's easier to work on that, the planter in a little bit folded position, I can do that. I don't have to take it all the way around. So if I've got a little bit smaller shot, it's a tight area, I would work on that planner. It allows me to do that. So we'll start the unfold again. Just that simple. Now one question you may ask, if you've got a switch box, is there any other way to fold the planner? 
There is. So I can use the ISO screen in the front one terminal and hold it. If I have a competitive planner or a tractor or a massive tractor with ISO, I can I can fold there as well. And one great thing about FIT one is I can even assign those ISO functions to the armrest and the joystick. That way I can have the adjustment and the control where I want. Pretty simple, pretty flexible. Mark, I'll give it back to you. All right, thank you, Kirby. Hey, nice little feature there, Kelly. Is, is you know, again, you ran the ran the planter earlier this year against your own planter. Uh, we'll get more into the details there, but you know that quick fold and unfold like that can make a difference when you have a lot of small fields to go back and forth from. Absolutely, you start to lose your patience when you're going up between the road and the creek in a low area, and you go in and out all those two, three acre patches. You you want it to fold and unfold very quickly. Yeah, and get you down to that nice 12 feet wide, 12 feet high to get down the road through the little creeks or whatever you might have to go through makes a big difference. And we talked a little bit about compaction earlier and the effects compaction has on the crops is pretty significant. Uh, with our momentum planner, we also have the load logic system uh, where it automatically controls how much down pressure we have or how much pressure we have on the ground because it has smart spindles. And it also controls the tire inflation. Again, a little bit on compaction. We talked about it with the tractor. Big thing with the planter as well. Yes, absolutely, especially in our no-till environment. That was, in my opinion, the second most impressive thing with the planter is the inflation capability of those types. You mentioned the second. What was the first? The delta force and the ability of that delta force to be incorporated into three different areas. I, I believe that's the key to the planter. Uh, far and away the most impressive thing, in my opinion. Perfect. All precision technology, precision planning technology from the factory. Uh, you mentioned the Delta Force, also have the V-Set uh, drive and everything with it. So all those key features from the factory make the momentum uh, one of the best planters out there on the market to fight compaction and help with yields itself. So uh, we want to talk a little bit about you now, Kelly, a little bit about Extreme Ag. So we're going to see a little video to kick us off, and then we'll come back and talk more about that. I'm Kelly Garrett. Uh, owner of Garrett Land and Cabin. I'm a sixth generation farmer from Marion, Iowa, which is a town of about 100 people. We farm about 7,000 acres, mostly corn, some soybeans, a bitter winter wheat, and about a 500 head cow calf. It's awesome, and it's 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 not work. It's not drudgery. I love every minute of it. The busier you are, the more chaotic it is, the more I feed off of it. The way that we farm is outside the box and we're very progressive and we're trying to raise higher yields and we leave no stone unturned. To me, the sustainable approach and the high yield approach, those paths are converging. I find that very exciting and I believe that's what's gonna take us to the next level. Really the goal of Extreme Ag isn't necessarily high yields. It's a better ROI. And when you can balance the soil and raise more with less, that's a better ROI and that's sustainable. My goal is to farm sustainably while raising 442 bushel corn. I want to show the world that it can be done at the same time. Not very often are farmers painted as the good guys. And I feel like environmentally now and with the carbon movement and soil health initiative, we, we are being painted as the good guys. And I want to be an advocate for that. So a little bit more about Kelly and Extreme Ag. Let's talk a little bit about Extreme Ag. What, what is really your mission with Extreme Ag and, and what brought it all about? Uh, all of us got to be friends at a PhD South Dakota at, at Brian and Darren's field day. And we all just learned from each other and you know started with the six of us. And we, we just wanted to, we became friends and we were like-minded because we were all progressive. Uh, and, and it was just became a peer group. So then when we started uh, started the website, started Extreme Ag, it's really just a peer group to improve your ROI. And that's what we all want to do is improve that ROI again, and ways we can do that to be more efficient, more profitable, and help everybody out, make it easier to farm as well. Absolutely. And things that we've tried on the farm or things I've learned from Chad and Lee and Kevin and Matt in Arkansas, when you bring those to a different part of the area, that some of the practices we use now, I had never even heard of before until I got to be friends with these guys. Yeah, just learning from other people, make that peer learning makes a big difference. And, and Lee's out here with us, Chad's out here. Chad, and you'll actually back, be back tomorrow on the stage with me, and we'll, we'll talk more at that time, too. Yes, and Chad, I need to tell you, Aaron thought when the music is on that we should dance. So on Thursday, Chad and Chad Mark are going to dance. Yeah, we'll, we'll Chad's see how a that great turns dancer, out. Aaron, he'll really make you happy. That's right. Practice your pop and lock. Yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll practice something, all right. 
Hey, uh, a little bit more, Kelly, on, on some of the equipment, some of the things we've talked about today. Uh, again, we always look for input. You know, what, what, can the, what can the growers, the farmers, what can they tell us to, to help them become better farmers? And, and part of that is with the land. You do a lot of no-till, almost all no-till, if I remember right. Yes, 100%. So, so talk to us a little bit about that and how you feel that, that works good for you in this area. Well, with the hills and the severe elevation changes we have, we need to be no-till for the conservation and the erosion control. And then when we've started to study soil health and things like that more and try to work more in tune with Mother Nature, the, the nutrient availability and the nutrient breakdown in a no-till system I feel is superior. And I need a planter and I need equipment that I can, I can do that. And it, it takes a better planter. It takes a tougher planter, stronger planter to get through all of that no-till uh, residue. And especially like next year, I think I'll be almost 100% corn. It even adds a more challenging environment at that point. Yeah, for sure. If you don't have that rotation, it can certainly be more challenging without a doubt. So I want to thank you for being here today. Appreciate that. You, we, you know, you have the opportunity to run the momentum planter uh, against your planter of another color. We'll just leave it at that. And, and again, the momentum, I believe it was uh, six or seven acres or bushels per acre better than what your planter was. It was. Uh, Arthur won the bet and he beat me by seven bushels. He did, but I think part of his beverages was gone by the time he finally got there to collect, if I remember I, right. I think he drank them on the way to the farm. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, he may have. We have. Again, any questions for, for Kelly? Certainly we'll entertain him at this time. Aaron, you have one? I've got one from the audience. Okay. And I've noticed it too. I've, I've watched Extreme Ag TV, and I noticed that you must have started binge watching Yellowstone because you're rocking a cowboy hat. They want to know what brand you what brand you wearing. Uh, this is a Resist All. Resist All. How many you got so far? Three. Three. There That's you all go. I got out here. Now, now you know, Aaron. Now we know. Resist All is the way to go. Again, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. You'll be back again tomorrow with Chad uh, about one o'clock, I think. So uh, uh, make sure you're back to see us again then. If you have any questions. I'm sure uh, Kelly will be out here in the crowd for a little bit, certainly can talk to him at that time. Uh, just as a reminder, some of the other things going on on the Fent lot here, we have the Ideal Combine, stop and see Kevin over there, and, and uh, also the Road Gator. We have Tanner and Paul over here on the Road Gator. Uh, we'll talk more of that as, as the day goes on. One more special uh, thing we have this year is from the NHRA. We have the, the stock uh, car back there from Anthony Troyer. Make sure you go back and meet Anthony. He's back there on his way to Indy where he's going to be racing this weekend so you can see the drag car and uh, meet him as well at the same time. Thanks, everybody, for being here for this session. We'll be back again at noon with Brian Hefty, and we'll talk more about our products as well as Brian on the, on the weed control as well as how the crops are doing this year. Again, thank you for being here, Kelly. Thank you, Mark.